All right, uh, example 8.2. Uh, solve the following system of equations. x times y is equal to 1, and x plus y is equal to 2. Um, and so uh, before we jump over to MATLAB and solve this uh, there using fsolve, uh, so we, by inspection there's going to be one unique solution to this system of equations, and it'll be uh, x is equal to y is equal to 1. Uh, so let's go over to MATLAB and see what we get and see what happens. Okay, so now I am uh, back over here in MATLAB, and let's go ahead and solve this using fsolve. Uh, so to solve using fsolve, the first thing I'm going to need to do is create an error function uh, and file. Okay, so I'll do that by clicking new script uh, to bring up a new editor window. Okay, and we'll be function, uh, res, so remember fsolve wants a uh, function with a single output variable. In terms of the name of the function, uh, let's call it, say, error func. This is example uh, two. And then fsolve also expects a function with a single input variable. Uh, so let me just do a capital X there um, uh, because to remind myself it's going to be a vector. So here we have the uh, setup for an error function with a single output and a single input. Uh, so this single input here is going to be a vector. Okay, In our case, it'll be a vector of length two um, where uh, each element is going to correspond to one of the variables that we are. Um, trying to solve for. Yeah, so in our system of equations we're trying to solve for y uh, and x. Okay, So let's let the first element of this big x vector correspond to y and the second element uh, correspond to x. And so what I like to do to facilitate uh, the notation used in the error function and to help me uh, not get confused and minimize errors is to do what I call uh, unpacking uh, the input vector. Okay, So I'm going to unpack uh, the input vector. And what I mean by that is we just said, well, uh, let's say that the first element of x is y. So I'm going to assign to variable y, lowercase y, a scalar, the first element of x. Then I'll let little x, okay, what I'll assign to little x is the second element of big x. Okay, uh, so now this makes clear to myself that the first element of x is going to correspond to y, second element is going to correspond to x. So then I can use these variables, y and x, uh, when I set up my error functions rather than refer to specific elements of the vector. Okay. You're free to choose the order of how you name x and y, uh, but once you choose an order, you need to stick with it throughout the entire problem. Okay. So next, we want to compute um, system of error functions. Okay. And so here uh, we have equation 1 and 2. Okay, and so uh, I want to set this up so that the function evaluates to zero when I found my solution. Uh, so rather than thinking about finding uh, the unique pair of x and y so that x times y is equivalent to 1 or equals to 1, I want to set it up so that when I find uh, my value of x and y that's a solution, uh, it, it, I'm representing this as x times y minus 1 is equal to zero. So I'm trying to find a unique pair of x, y so that x times y minus 1 uh, evaluates to zero. Okay, and so I'll assign the result of my first error function to res1. Okay, and that's going to be x times y minus 1. Second error function res2, uh, going down here, will be x plus y uh, minus 2. And then the last step is pack up our error functions. Okay, so res. Okay, I'll pack up the result of error function 1, res 1, and res 2. Okay, and so, you know, what MATLAB is essentially going to do with, with fsolve is it'll keep guessing different values of x, okay, where the first element of x is y, second is little x. It'll keep guessing values of x until my function returns um, a value, a vector of uh, zeros or uh, values as close to zero uh, as possible uh, within a given tolerance. Okay, uh, in terms of documentation, okay, so documentation isn't as um, useful necessarily here or interesting here. I'll put the function signature up uh, out of habit, uh, but then it's just a matter of error function m file for use with fsolve, for example, uh, 8.2. OK, 
Okay, save it. All right, and so then to solve, okay, uh, so we're told there's just a single unique set. Um, so we'll say uh, SOL is equal to F solve. You need to provide function handle air func ex2. Uh, then I need to provide a vector of length 2 that contains an initial estimate for y and x. Okay, um, and let me do. Um, Minus one, uh, so two times rand, one comma two, should give me a vector of length two of numbers. So rand one comma two will give me a vector of length two of numbers uniformly distributed between zero and one. So when I multiply that by two, a vector of length two of numbers uniformly distributed between uh, zero and two. Then I subtract one to shift it, so it should be from negative one uh, to one. Okay, let's just see what happens. Okay, so first time through, hey, I get an answer that's pretty close, 1.0008, uh, 0 0.992. And if I look at the error message, uh, it says equation solved. Um, it even tells you that the value is near zero as measured by the default value of the function tolerance. Um, so yeah, it says it found a solution. Um, we know that the unique answer is uh, y is equal to x is equal to 1. Uh, this is what we get. So it's not quite 1. Uh, but it's value very, very close to 1, um, and our error functions are within 0 uh, as defined by the tolerance. Okay, and just to see what those are, and we could oh, we could pass these uh, back to our error function. So if I call error func ex2 and I pass to it SOL, okay, um, first error function uh, evaluates to negative uh, 0 0.6145 times 10 to the negative 6. Uh, then the other one is, is 0 within uh, the, their level of accuracy with that value of x and y. Okay? Or level of precision. Uh, if you want to uh, try and get values even closer to 0, um, we can do that. Okay? Uh, and so how you would have to do that is, well, one, if, if this is fine, you could turn off this video right now. Um, but if you want to get closer, we need to change the uh, tolerances used. Okay, so I'm going to make this full screen. Okay, I'm going to make this a little bigger so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. So uh, MATLAB stopped because that's our error functions are equal to zero within the tolerance. So if I want to try and get a value even closer to one, I need to change um, the tolerance. Okay, and so to see what that is, we need to mess with uh, MATLAB's options. Okay, so I'm going to assign to this variable options uh, the default options uh, used by fsolve. And how I get that is the command is optim options. Okay. And then the first argument, you can either put it in single quotes for string or give it a function handle, is fsolve. Okay. If I press return, okay, what's displayed is uh, the default options used by fsolve. Okay. It says that we haven't changed any parameters. Uh, you know, here's the default algorithm used by fsolve, this trust region dogleg. Um, but these all correspond to um, parameters that you can change uh, via this optim options command. Okay. Um, so, you know, one to point out is every time we, we run fsolve, it displays this message here, right? Equation solved. You know, if I wanted to get rid of that, you know, there's an option called display, right? And it displays, you know, the final result along with that message. You can always turn that off or to none, uh, and we'll see how you can do that. But in terms of tolerance, okay, what we want to tweak is this function tolerance and optimality tolerance. Okay, these are what it's using to determine if our value is close enough to uh, zero. Okay, and as you see, when I passed the solution back to my function, and we were returned. Uh, two values of our functions that are less than 1 times 10 to the negative 6. So in MATLAB's eyes, right, they're close enough to 0 uh, within the tolerance. Okay, if I want to tweak those now, I can define a new variable, say options2, okay, and I can call optim options. Okay, and what I can say is, okay, I want to essentially update our original options. Okay, and now I just need to list what I want to change. So the first one I want to change is this one, function tolerance. Okay, so I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it here. 
Okay. So the fault value is 1 times 10 to the negative 6. I want to make that 1 times 10 to the negative, I don't know, 12. Okay. Let's just go crazy. Second argument I want to change, or variable I want to change, so it'll come next to my list in single quotes, is this optimality tolerance. Okay, copy and paste it, so there I just did control C. And default value is 1 times 10 to the negative 6. Let's just make that 1 times 10 to the negative 12 uh, to experiment. Okay, and so if I don't suppress the output, press return. Okay, so now we've assigned this to options 2. Looks very similar to what we had before, only now up top in terms of set properties. Okay, what it's done is it removed has removed from this default properties list function tolerance and optimality tolerance and instead displays the values that um, I'm indicating or specifying to use. Okay. And so how this changes is I just went back up to our uh, previous fsolve command. Okay. I'm going to store the result to you know, sol2. Okay. And the fsolve command looks like um, you know, our function handle for our error function followed by our vector of initial guesses for y and x. And so if I press return again, right, I get these values that uh, are close to 1, uh, but not exactly. Okay. How I can tell it to use our new uh, updated options is, you know, I have to explicitly tell MATLAB to do it or FSOL to do it, and I provide a third argument. Okay. So if I just provide uh, or indicate options, options were the default options um, used by FSOL, right? And so um, I get essentially the same value. It's changed just a little bit. Uh, presumably just because of a different initial guess of uh, y and x. Okay, but options 2 is where we stored our up uh, updated parameters to. Okay, and so if I run using options 2, hey look, I'm much closer to 1, uh, but still not exactly. Okay, and our message changed a little bit. Uh, it still says equation solved, which means good. Uh, we can trust this answer, uh, but it notes an accuracy possible. The vector of function values is near zero as measured by the selected value of the function tolerance. However, the last step was uh, ineffective. Um, and so you know, what this means is it converged an answer within the tolerance. What this is indicating is you know, if you think about f solve randomly guessing different values of x, um, you know, when it tried a new uh, guess of x, the last iteration, uh, the value of the error functions didn't change. <laughs> um, so cool, right? So that's even closer. Uh, if we can try just running again and see if we can get one, right? It changes a little bit um, just based on those different initial estimates, uh, but with that different tolerance, uh, clearly uh, it's closer. Okay, uh, and then just in the interest of playing with options, if I click option or type options two again, okay, those are the two uh, options that I've overwritten. Um, you know, if I want to display this message, that command is, or the option I want to update is, is display. So what I could do is, if I'm going to do, say, options 3, or um, in the interest of overriding yourself, options 2, we'll assign to options 2. Okay, command is optim options. Okay, and first I'm going to type options 2, which means, you know, bring up all of the... Uh, you know, uh, settings uh, that are assigned to uh, variable options too. Um, and what I would like to do is update display, and I want to change that to none uh, or off. Okay. If I press return, right now I see display has been updated. Okay, now I go back to our, you know, called fsolve and run, All right? Now I get an answer. Uh, and I don't get the, the message that accompanies it. Right? And so uh, this could be useful, uh, for example, in one of the exercises, you're going to loop over uh, values of x. Um, so we're going to try and solve uh, Rails law expression and plot phase diagrams. Uh, and so to do that, you're going to loop over values of x, and then for each value of x, have an fsolve command uh, to solve for uh, y and t or y and p. And so for those cases, displaying that uh, message every time could be rather uh, annoying uh, and unnecessary, so you know that would be uh, how you can remove it. Okay, uh, and if you want to go back to default options, all right? Well, we assign to options the default options, but again, that was just options. If I just do option options and then f solve, all right? 
Uh, now options has assigned to it the default um, settings for fsolve. And then last thing is, you know, here I listed option or fsolve in um, single quotes, uh, like a string. I could equivalently give it a function handle, and you get exactly the same thing. Okay. Um, but these are all other things that you could, uh, you know, look at tweaking. You know, it even tells you different algorithms you could uh, tweak and trust or um, change. Um, but um, yeah, uh, there's links to documentation provided in the text um, to, you know, how you could tweak these and what possible settings uh, are.